Good evening, everybody. It's Will Cooper here um, in the Sereno Cigar Company studios, bringing you Prime Cuts number 18 on this January 7th, 2018. And we're continuing our series looking at the Cigar Coop countdown. And today we're going to actually look at eight installments on the countdown that have occurred over the past week. And uh, we'll un they've already been unveiled, and we'll kind of recap them here tonight. Um, you know, normally I've been doing these things in fives, but um, I think folks who've been following me or have been following the primetime shows know I was traveling this past week. Uh, I was down in um, South Florida doing a few things. It was uh, capped off by uh, an opportunity I had to interview Charlie and Jack Tarano. And if you haven't seen primetime episode number 37, you need to check out that episode. Um, if you've had questions about what went down as far as the sale of Tarano cigars, um, we put Charlie to every all the questions you had on your mind and we had on our mind, and and Charlie answered every one of them. So I uh, and there was a great dynamic that was among uh, Aaron, myself, with Charlie and Jack. Um, so I, I I encourage folks to check out that episode. It's an episode I think we're we're proud of. And, um, you know, it was just a lot of fun that night. So, you know, so because of that, there was a little bit of travel. I kind of put off Prime Cuts until I got back to the Sereno Cigar Company Studios to, to recap it tonight. Um, so it's like a bit, it's a big week uh, for Cigar Coop in the prime time over the next two weeks. So uh, you're going to see we're going to be getting into the nitty gritty of the high ranking cigars. And all the cigars are high ranking, but the, the top of the list is going to start coming out on Cigar Coop. You're going to see the prime time awards start to be rolled out over the next two weeks. These are the awards voted on by myself and my partners, Aaron Loomis and Bear the Pussy. Uh, who had input into the five categories of awards. If you're watching this on January 7th, uh, on Monday, January 8th, we'll be announcing the Small Factory of the Year as the first of the primetime awards. And plus, my partners were also unveiling their Cigar of the Year list. Bear Duplissy, moments before the show, has named his top 10 cigars on El Oso Fumar Takes uh, 12. You'll be seeing that be posted on Cigar Coop uh, very, very shortly uh, once we kind of get the post-production on that. And then Aaron Loomis will have um, his list on developing palettes this week as well. I believe it's Tuesday for that list. So uh, plenty of activity, so to speak. Um, and, you know, one final note, you know, I've been, uh, as far as, I've been critical of a lot of uh, online lists this year. And if you saw episode 37 of, of uh, Primetime, I, I made my feelings known on it. But, um, you know, I want people to understand that it wasn't about the cigars I felt that were picked. I think they're all excellent cigars that were picked. Uh, my criticism has been more of what hasn't been considered this year. And that's kind of where I think some of the lists have fallen short this year. And in particular, it's something, I'm not saying I did a perfect job on Cigar Coop by any means, but I tried to at least have more of things that may not be in my comfort zone, so to speak, but I felt were really, really good cigars. Another thing I kind of saw is, you know, online lists tend to be very palettes. I saw someone write a comment. I think you see multiple people write a com comment saying how online lists are very palette specific. If you follow this list and you follow these videos and you follow this closely, um, we went through the criteria of the coupe list. It's not all palette specific here. There are a lot of factors we, we look at, in particular uh, impact to the marketplace has been looked at, as well as putting these cigars into some people's hands who don't follow online media to kind of get their feedback. So there was, there was, I felt, things that, even though, yes, it's a personal list that I've done, at the same time, I think there's some things I've done to take uh, to kind of take the personal piece out to some extent. And there's nothing wrong with, with a personal palette list, by the way. I don't have any any issue with that. Um, but I, I think to lump everyone into that category is wrong. And I've been that's an, that's kind of another thing. I didn't address that on prime time last week, but I'm addressing it now. Um, before people make a generalization like that, they, they need to look at that a little more closely. But let's just kind of, uh, and we'll run through the first 10 selections of the coupe list, which have been done on Prime Cuts episodes 16 and 17. We won't recap, you know, we won't go into the detail of these as we'll get into the eight cigars uh, that we haven't recapped where, where the detail is going to be. Um, as par for the course, if you're watching at 1130 at night on the East Coast, you get a PowerPoint presentation. That's, that's, that's part of uh, your reward for tuning in to Prime Cuts here. 
Um, so let's kind of start. If you saw uh, kind of starting this off, number 30 is um, the Tarano E0121, uh, the Tarano Volt E0121 Robusto. Surprised this cigar was not on more lists this year. Very good cigar uh, as far as that goes. Uh, another cigar that we, I haven't seen on a lot of lists in the last couple of years, the EP Carrillo Original Rebel Rebellious 54. Keep in mind we use a two-year window on Cigar Coupe. So this this is something that you probably wouldn't see on a lot of lists this year. But I didn't see it on a lot of lists last year either. Uh, great broadly cigar by Ernesto Perez Carrillo Jr. Check that one out. Um, this one you've probably seen on a lot of lists. Southern Drawer Jacobs Ladder Robusto. Robert Holt, uh, big breakthrough cigar for him. Number 27, a cigar that I haven't seen on a lot of lists again. Rancho Luna Maduro Robusto by JRE Tobacco Company. Uh, Justo and Julio Aroa. Uh, this is a cigar that really flew under the radar this year. Number 26. Uh, I didn't see this one on a lot of lists either. And it's the Blackwork Studio Sindustry Toro. I've seen other Blackwork Studio list um, cigars and black label trading company cigars make the list. Not this one. And I think this was a real standout cigar for James Brown. Uh, the Sindustry Toro. Uh, number 25. Uh, the Cabarro Caño uh, boys. Uh, Juan and Bill. Protocol Themis, uh, the Toro, uh, second year in a row, they qualify for the top 25. Congrats to those guys. Number 24, uh, this is a score I have seen on several lists. The David P. Elric Tremont Toro by Mike Bellity and MLB Cigar Ventures. Number 23, a cigar I haven't seen on a lot of lists. The Casada Reserva Pravada Barber Pole Robusto. Fantastic Barber Pole. Uh, surprised I haven't seen it on more lists this year. Number 22, uh, Sereno Royale Medio Robusto Gordo. Uh, this is, uh, Medio is the one cigar, I think, from uh, Sereno that gets a little overlooked sometimes. Uh, but this is a sensational cigar. And um, in the Gordo size, it actually worked real, real well. Number 21, another cigar I didn't see on the list either, although it came out very late last year, the Diamond Crown Black Diamond Emerald by J.C. Newman. Um, Connecticut Broly, this is a cigar that was long uh, overdue, uh, actually long awaited by a lot of people in uh, the market to be released. I think they did a great job, earns the number 21 spot. So that was 21 to 30, brief recap. What we'll do now is we will get into the, uh, the nitty-gritty of cigars 20 to 13. So we'll start it off. And uh, Robert Holt uh, becomes the first brand in the year 2017 to, to nail two cigars on the countdown this year. Uh, this is the Southern Draw Rose of Sharon Toro. It's a cigar. I think it's safe to say that this cigar has made a lot of lists this year. So um, as far as that goes, I think you've seen that cigar quite a bit. Um, it's certainly a, a worthy cigar. This was a breakthrough cigar for Robert Holt and Southern Draw. Um, they've been banging on the door. They've been doing some really good releases. But this one, I think, kind of put them over the top. It's their box press Connecticut uh, that they're making using that Ecuadorian Connecticut shade wrapper. Uh, they're using a Nicaraguan binder and a combination of Nicaraguan and Dominican tobacco in the filler. They got some Piloto Cubano from the Dominican in that. Um, it was the Toro that really, I felt, shined in that cigar. Um, you know, it's a cigar, I'd say... That was, you know, actually has a little more body, particularly it's a cigar that starts out medium bodied, but it's going to go more to medium full by the last third of this cigar. Uh, I found that the blend that worked really, really well in the Toro size and in the box press format. Um, so Southern Drawer Cigars, um, they land on this list for this, the, um, this first, they're the first brand this year to be on the list twice. So... A newcomer to the list, earning two spots, Robert Holt and Southern Drawer Cigars, Rosa Sharon, named in tribute to Mrs. Holt, Sharon Holt, Robert Holt's wife. So good job by, um, good job by Robert Holt on that one. And um, now number 19, um, we'll kind of go to number 19. And this one is a cigar that was on a lot of lists last year. It just did not, it, it just, it made it this year on, on the list as far as um, what we're doing here. But, um, but 
excuse me, sorry, I hit the um, unmute button. Um, it's the Warp Maestro del Tiempo cigar um, by Warp Cigars. And this was on a lot of lists last year. It just, the review didn't get in in time last year on Cigar Coop. Again, another reason why I advocate for the two-year window for cigars so we could, so, so as many of these cigars could, could make the list as possible. Um, the Warp Maestro del Tiempo is a cigar that is coming out of the Casa Fernandez factory, uh, Tabsa in particular in the Dominican Republic. Um, it's, it's a cigar, I think, that really helped Warp get, that Warp that had success. They started in 2014. This cigar came out in 2016. I think it took, helped them get to another level. This size, I think, was a bit of the forgotten size in the portfolio. It was a four and a half by 52 short Robusto. Uh, it's 100% Nicaraguan tobacco uh, using Corojo and Criollo tobaccos from the Agonarsa Farms. Kyle Gellis is, is uh, the owner of Warp Cigars, and you'd be hard-pressed to find a lot of cigars in his portfolio above a 50 ring gauge, uh, but this is a 52, which is as big as um, Kyle has in the portfolio, and um, what I found interesting about that is um, I think it worked. I think it proved Kyle Gellis can blend a 50-plus ring gauge cigar, and uh He's certainly capable of releasing a really good one to market, and he did with the uh, Maestro de Tiempo uh, 5712. And um, I also want to mention this is Kyle's had a lot of success on the Coupe Countdown. Uh, this is the third year he has placed a cigar uh, on the Countdown in the last four years. So he's been on in 2014, 2015, and now returns with Maestro del Tiempo in 2017. Uh, so he's had a really good track record as far as being a uh, a part of the of the coop goes. Um, definitely a cigar. Um, it's a cigar that actually has some strength to it too. I'll say, especially in this size, I found the strength really ramped up towards the end of it. But uh, great cigar. Check it out. Uh, definitely worthy of a box worthy purchase for sure. Um, moving ahead, this is a cigar. I didn't see on a lot of lists this year, and I didn't see it on a lot of lists last year. It was, it was another one of these 2016 releases that permeated, I'd say, a little more in 2017, but it, um, it's a cigar by Ventura Cigar Company called the Archetype Sage Advice. Now, the Archetype series is, is Ventura Cigar Company's most premium line. Now, if you don't know who Ventura Cigar Company is, they are the premium cigar company of uh, Cretic International. They also own Phillips and King Distributors. So um, they've had some other brands in the market over the past few years. If you know the Psycho 7 is probably one of those, as well as Project 805. Um, those are two of their more popular brands. But the Archetype was designed to be a more premium series uh, or the most premium series that they offer. And they, what Ventura does is they tend to co-partner with some of the best factories out there. And in the case of the Archetypes, they did three cigars with Davidoff factories, and they did two cigars with Drew Estate factories. One of the cigars they did out of the Davidoff factories is the Archetype Sage Advice, which is this beautiful hybrid uh, Habano wrapper they're using over a Dominican San Vicente binder and a multi-country uh, filler. It's made at the Occidental Cigar Factory in the Dominican Republic. And the Toro size is a 6x52 um, that's offered. Now, Archetype is a very interesting concept around this brand. Um, if you don't know what it is, uh, the brand was inspired by the work of psychologist Dr. Carl Jung and the writings of myth mythographer Joseph Campbell, who defined archetypes as the constantly repeating characters who occur in the dreams of all people and myths of all cultures. So it's kind of this, like I said, it's a concept brand that they've done, and they've kind of tied these themes into these cigars. Um, the archetype uh, sage advice, this cigar, like I said, it's a beautiful cigar. Like I said, that wrapper really, really shines in this cigar. It's about a $12 cigar, so it doesn't break the bank. But I'll tell you, it's a cigar that if you like Davidoff, and maybe if you don't like Davidoff, it's a cigar I'd really advise uh, smoke. It's got a beautiful natural tobacco sweetness to it, a little bit of grassy notes, a little herbal spice, some white pepper, and even this little subtle nougat note that kind of just puts a little bit of additional sweetness on this thing. 
Um, I'd say it's a medium uh, cigar for the most part. Towards the end, it may approach medium to full. Uh, the Arts Type Sage Advice Toro by Ventura Cigar Company. Uh, surprised I didn't see this one on more lists, um, but it is a cigar that should not be overlooked. Anyways, this is Will Cooper. I'm talking Prime Cuts number 18. We're going through uh, the Cigar Coop countdown from cigars 20 to 13 tonight. We just finished number 18, the Archetype Sage Advice Toro. Now, number 17, this is a brand that uh, has had a lot of success on the Coop Countdown. A cigar I did, I have not seen, again, on a, on a lot of lists. Part of that is this was a 2016 release that made it onto the 2017. Um, it's a brand um, from Boutique Blend Cigars under the Oliveros line called the Oliveros All-Stars Small Batch Number 5 Basso. I say that one real fast. The Oliveros Small Batch, excuse me, the Oliveros All Stars Small Batch Number no. Five Basso. Um, now, Oliveros is was actually the name of the company uh, before Boutique Blends was Boutique Blends. They were Oliveros, and Oliveros originally started out as a line of flavored cigars. They've had some premium cigars that make the list, uh, but it's the company owned by Rafael Nodel, and. He really broke through in 2013 with his Aging Room cigars, which have had an enormous run on the cigar aficionado list. Um, the Oliveros brand kind of fell into the background, but last year, Noldell decided to bring back the Oliveros brand, probably for FDA reasons. Um, but I think it was also time, because he's had some good cigars that even beyond those flavored cigars that had the Oliveros line, the old Oliveros Sun Grown Reserve was a, uh, was a great cigar. So... They had the old King Abanos. They've had some good cigars under the Oliveros line. Now, when he brought back Oliveros, he brought back a regular production line called the Gran Retorno. And he brought back a small batch release, which is called Oliveros All-Stars. And with the Oliveros All-Stars, um, he's teaming up with different... He's collaborating, which really Raphael collaborates on almost everything he does. Because the Asian Room stuff, he collaborates with Hochi Blanco. He's done some collaborations with... Uh, AJ Fernandez. So really, it's a brand that's been built a lot on on collaborations. Um, now, the other thing that's interesting is uh, this cigar he did with Ernesto Perez Carrillo Jr. It's the third cigar to come out of Ernesto's factory on this year's countdown. And this is something I'm not seeing on a lot of lists this year. Uh, Tabacalera La Alianza by Ernesto Perez Carrillo Jr. has had a very good run over the last two years. Did a first factory to land three cigars on this year's countdown. This cigar, I'm just like I said, this cigar was really a great cigar. It uses a, a U.S. broadleaf wrapper. Not, not this, they're not disclosing exactly where it is, but it's probably Connecticut, knowing Ernesto, over Dominican binder and a combination of Dominican and Nicaraguan fillers. Now, Rafael Nodel, the one thing he could say he's missing from his portfolio to some extent has been a broadleaf release. So he goes to, where does he go to get his broadleaf? He goes to the guy who's probably synonymous with broadleaf, Ernesto Perez Carrillo Jr. And this is just a, a wonderful cigar. It is, it's got these uh, beautiful, bold mocha notes in there. There's a little bit of orange citrus, some cedar, and black and white, uh, black and white pepper spices mixed in. It's a medium to full cigar. It's a rich cigar. It's got a lot of flavor. These flavors kind of gel together really, really nicely. The Basso is actually a 6x54 to uh, Toro. And I mentioned Raphael has had an incredible run on the Coupe Countdown. And since 2010, he's landed on the list six times. Excuse me, six years. So he's had, so six out of the last eight years, Boutique Blends slash Oliveros, uh, Raphael Nodel cigars have landed six of eight years. That is a record on the Coupe Countdown. This cigar should not be overlooked by any means. This is, this is an absolute home run. Uh, I hope that this All-Stars concept kind of continues for him. But uh, again, it is uh, a great cigar. And uh, one, like I said, if you haven't smoked it, give this one a shot. I think you're really going to be surprised by it. All right, we are lost a little bit of screen real estate here. I apologize. Going number 16. Um, this is a cigar you may have seen on a lot of lists. It's... Uh, it's a, it's a cigar from last year, yes. It wasn't reviewed to this year. Again, we're using the two-year window. 
Um, great cigar from Padron. Uh, it's the Siri number 90, uh, commemorating the 90th birthday of the late uh, Jose Orlando Padron. Um, this cigar mid-year scored very, very well on, on the coupe list, particularly in the Maduro blend. You know, the natural got a lot of great uh, uh, praise, particularly last year. But I think it was the Maduro that was kind of the secret ingredient, uh, the secret sauce of this line. Um, I really enjoyed the Maduro in this uh, in this rounded format that they would do it now. The 1926 Siri number 90s, which come in natural Maduro, use a rounded Vitola, which is something you don't normally see out of Padron, um, in particularly in the 1926 Siri line. Um, it's a five and a half by fifty-two rounded. Uh, I'd say robusto extra. It's priced at nineteen fifty, and it also comes in a tubo, something that's a little different. Uh, we don't see Padron cigars in tubos, but these are in these beautiful. This comes in a particular, a nice burgundy uh, red tubo, uh, and um, once you open up that cigar, it's it's got a ton of flavor. It's got cedar, black cherry, some uh, earth notes, and a little bit of black pepper, and even a little bit of dark chocolate in there. Now, there's a kick on this cigar towards the end. Um, where it actually, uh, this cigar almost approaches full strength, full bodied. Uh, I'm a little curious what some longer term aging will do to these uh, over time. So I think they'll kind of dial back a little more because that's not what you know. The 1926 Serial Line isn't known for something like that. But particularly some of the ones that I've smoked, and even some of the ones that have aged a few months, they were a little stronger than I expected. Uh, but again, no shortage of flavor here. Um, wonderful cigar. Uh, it's, a, it's only the second time Padron has made the countdown, which is surprising. But you got to remember, Padron doesn't have a lot of new releases, and we're still one of the brands that uses a new release cycle for this. So it's the second time in three years that they make the countdown. And uh, in 2015, they were the Cigar Coupe Cigar of the Year with the Padron 50th anniversary. So a big, uh, a big uh, landing on the countdown for for uh, Padron cigars with the number 16 cigar of the year. Moving ahead to number 15. Um, actually, let's kind of just make one comment, and you can see it's dabbing up Nicaragua six by sixty. But let me just make one comment about that Padron. Uh, 90 Maduro. That 1926 Serie 90 Maduro was a line extension. It was actually the first. Uh, line extensions are eligible for the cigar coupe list, uh, as long as they were came out in the last two years and were reviewed over the last year. Um, that I've seen that cigar. A lot of people have incorrectly called the number 90 a line within itself. It's really a line extension in the 1926 Serie, and that uses the same blend. Davidoff Nicaragua makes it at number 15, and it's also a line extension, the 6x60. I haven't seen anyone even review this cigar. Uh, and this is a cigar, if you're not a 60 ring gauge smoker, you need to even give check out this, this Davidoff Nicaragua in the 6x60. Big surprise, this cigar came up very, very big in the big ring gauge. It, it really was a great, you know, Davidoff came out with 60 ring gauge line extensions uh, this year. They were a little more limited in nature, and they came out with them for all the black label Discovery Pillar cigars. So um, in addition to Davidoff Nicaragua getting a 6x60, the Nicaragua Box Press got a 6x60, the Escudero got a um, got one, as well as the Yamasa. Um, I think it was the Nicaragua. I don't think it was the Nicaragua. I know it was the Nicaragua that really shined. They were Most of them were pretty good in, in that 60 ring gauge. I didn't think the Yamasa worked as well. But the other ones, I think, for the most part, worked well. But the, but the 6x60 Davidoff Nicaragua, it completely shined. I wasn't expecting this to be a top 15 cigar. Davidoff Nicaragua had not made my list ever before. Um, but this blend, I just thought it really, it really cracked on this thing. And... Um, Davidoff's a, a company that's had an incredible run on the Cigar Coop Countdown. Uh, five years in a row, they've, they've landed at least one cigar on the Countdown. Last year, they had four cigars on the Countdown, which was kind of unheard of for a brand. And that's something I've been a little... But they had, they had that good a year last year. They had, that, they had a dominant year last year. I think this year they came a little bit back to earth, but it's very hard to repeat that track uh, record from last year. Uh, but certainly, I recommend this. This is a complex smoke. It's got notes of caramel. It's got natural tobacco, some fruit, uh, earth notes. Uh, there's some hay and baker spice, a little black pepper in there. It's a, it's medium strength, medium bodied cigar. If you, even if you're not a six by sixty ring gauge, give this cigar a smoke. Give the Davidoff Nicaragua. If you like Davidoff Nicaragua, I think you're gonna really be pleased. 
about what this 6x60 is going to bring to the table here. So at number 15, the Davidoff Nicaragua um, makes this year's countdown. Moving forward, number 14, the Mombacho Corseca 2012. Uh, Mombacho Cigars lands on the countdown for the first time. The Corseca is a concept you're going to start seeing more and more at cigar companies. It involves using tobaccos from a particular vintage year. Corseca means harvest. And these cigars, every cigar, every tobacco in this cigar is a Nicaraguan tobacco that was harvested in 2012. It was some of the best tobaccos that Master Blender Claudio Scroy of Mombacho Cigars was able to get his hands on. Um, he rolled these cigars uh, a while ago. So these cigars were actually rolled, I believe, in 2013. They were sitting at the Casa Fabili factory in Granada, where their factory is located. And they were released at this year's IPCBR trade show. This was a this was a little bit more of a limited release that was a little too limited possibly to make a count. It was on, it was on the border to be honest with you. Not that the cigar didn't do well, but there were only 500 boxes of 10 made of this cigar. This is one where distribution came into play a little. Um, did it work against it, the rating a bit? May, maybe to some extent, but it certainly doesn't take away from how good the cigar is. But this is going to be one of these cigars on the list. It's going to be hard to find in a while, which you do try to avoid those. Um, you do try, even though there are limited editions that can make the list, you want to be careful with them sometimes. But this is one. If you can find it, grab this cigar, smoke it, smoke it right away. It's a really good cigar. Put a couple away, see how they go. Uh, great cigar, well-balanced cigar. A lot of nice. The flavors just seem to really pop on this cigar. They balance each other very nicely. It's not a strong cigar. It starts out about mild to medium. And by the second half, it's going to become a medium strain cigar. Good sweetness, good earthy notes, some cedar, a little bit of spice in there. Um, sometimes Mombacho cigars have a little bit of a sour component to it. I didn't really get it on, on this particular cigar. I just thought it was overall a really, really good cigar. And um, earns a spot as number 14. The Mombacho Coseca 2012. And, you know, just looking at the picture here, um, this cigar was released at the trade show and it had different banding. Um, we were very, we were actually lucky enough to get the banded cigar right, like right at the end of the cigar coupe year, um, right up against Thanksgiving. Um, it w because we have to have the final packaging to make the list. If your cigar is using pre-release packaging, it's not eligible. So we, this did come in in time. I mean, if it, if it would have missed, it could have we most likely would have made next year's list. But um, that is a prerequisite is we don't put uh, the pre-release packaging. It's got to have the final packaging that was released that year. Rosa Sharon was in a similar uh, boat in that the pink bands came out later in the year, but that packaging got in in time. So, but it's got to have that final packaging because we want people to be able to find these cigars once they hit the retailers. So finally, uh, number 13. And this was the most controversial pick of the list. And not because the cigar is bad. It's a very good cigar. Um, not because it's made by Skip Martin or Roma Craft. Uh, so it has nothing to do with that. But uh, this was a cigar that was actually one I debated whether it was eligible or not. And it was the Roma Craft Tobacco Wonderlust Robusto. Now, this is a cigar that's sold in Europe, in Germ in the German market. Typically on Cigar Coop, there's a rule that we don't include regional releases. Right? But it, the spirit of that rule was more to avoid the like the Texas only releases or the New York City only releases or the the Great Lakes releases, something like that. But we don't like there's a lot of cigars that make the cigar coupe list that are only US releases. So this was because so, and, and we consider U.S. only releases national releases. Germany, this went to the German market. You can consider that a national release for the German market. So based on that fact, the call was made by me that this cigar should be deemed eligible because it's a national release, and we don't deem it has to be released to every distributed in every country as long as it's, it's nationally available in one country. In this case, it's Germany. The second thing is about this cigar was, um, you know, I think Romacraft did it, has not treated this cigar as the German market cigar. 
when when Skip Martin's at the trade show, Wonderlust is out there displayed with all those other core lines. And Mike Rogalis, it's out there with their core lines. It's part of their it's part of their portfolio. So based on that, uh, it made the list. Is it a little more hard to get? Yeah. But um, definitely, Skip has encouraged folks to go buy the cigar, you know, purchase it from a German retailer and have it shipped. Great cigar. It's, it's as good a Roma Craft to, uh, back cigar as I've had. It's got a Brazilian Matafina wrapper. Which they actually put a darker priming of that wrapper on it this year over an Indonesian binder and undisclosed filler made at the Nica Sueño factory in uh, Esteli, Nicaragua. Um, you know, Roma Craft is known for the Intemperance BA. Uh, we see he's Brazilian Hour Paraca. Here they're using Brazilian Matafina. Uh, it's a great, great cigar. Um, it's got notes of creamy oak, some coffee, a little natural tobacco sweetness, a little bit of dried fruit, pepper, and it's got a little bit of that salty component, which I sometimes like on a cigar. Medium, medium, medium strength, medium body cigar. Roma Craft, second time in three years, they land on the Coupe Countdown. It's this is definitely one of the most unique cigars to be released to date. I understand how this one wasn't on a lot of lists this year, uh, just because of, again, it was a little more difficult, but there was an executive decision uh, made on that, and it went to the, uh, it went to, um, the decision was made that it would be included, it wasn't considered a regional release. So, anyway, we are getting to the end of tonight. Uh, we'll be doing one of these I think the next one I'm probably going to do is Friday night. We'll go through 8 through 12 on the list. So that will be Prime Cuts number 19. Uh, if, you, if you missed it, we should have the links up shortly. Bear the Pussy has named his top 10 cigars of the year uh, on El Oso Fumar Takes. You're going to want to check that out. Again, uh, Aaron Loomis and June Liu and the team at Developing Pals will be unveiling their cigars of the year this week. And, of course, the Primetime Awards are going to be starting uh, shortly as well. So um, that's going to do it for Prime Cuts number 18. Will Cooper here. Uh, I'll see everybody on Prime Time on Thursday night. Ernesto Padilla is our guest, followed by the next Prime Cuts number 19 on Friday night. Have a great night, everybody.